Welcome back. Well, with the release of the A-level results serving as our backdrop, this morning we're discussing really what a lot of people and educators all around the world want to understand. What is the key to success? Well, let's take a look at some of your feedback, shall we? Solomon Collins Wanga says, putting God first and trusting in themselves, uh, that is what makes a winner. Let me just read another one. Wesley <laughs> Apollo Sharik says, success is determined by one's courage and being faithful to God. Uh, do you have any there? Yeah, Sandra? David Robb says they have to harvest what they planted. And Kabanda Monia says they should first trust in themselves. Trust in God, trust in themselves. <laughs> I guess a bit of both. Yeah. All right, one more. David Mugera says more efforts should be put on the sciences because the rest are nothing. Maybe that's one of the keys to success. That's an extreme. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, joining us in the studio to help us understand some of these keys to success, we have with us an educator, also a retired commissioner, Mr. John Agaba. Thank you so much for coming Thank and you. speaking to us. Thank you. I, I guess the first question we have to ask you is, in your opinion, in your in your life of being an educator, what do you think, in your opinion, are some of the keys to good success in these Ugandan schools? <laughs> Very interesting. Good mm -hmm. success or, you see, how do people measure success? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Mm -hmm. There is the short-term success. Mm -hmm. That um, uh, a child or a student has uh, done an examination and has passed and has passed very well. He has been successful in that examination, in the examination. He has not been successful in the education system. Because oftentimes even people who have failed A-levels or O-levels have turned out to be very successful human beings in life. So did examination, which this person failed or passed, can, can, can you say it, it could measure success? So somebody is successful in an examination. But then another person can be successful in the entire life. What makes somebody successful in the entire life is his commitment to life, his, the way he looks at, at life, the, his attitude towards work, his attitude towards life. And what happens these days is the parents looking at success in terms of the passes. And this is what is going to happen today. I think when, they release, when the minister releases the exams, uh, people are going to come up with A's, others are going to come up with failures. And my question would be, all my, my feeling to, the, to my, what I could tell the people is those who have failed, they have failed in examination, they have not failed in life. That's a, that's a really good point because I think from what I'm hearing from you is that just because you pass your A-levels doesn't necessi necessarily mean that you're going to be successful no, in life. It but it is indeed a building block. I mean, you cannot take away from someone being successful in examinations from being successful in life no. because it, it, it really expands certain things. Discipline, yes. uh, achieving certain goals, being diligent. Uh, you know, it, it also speaks in itself of... Yeah, it, it, it does, but it is. you cannot say this fellow has got... He, triple A's, mm. will become the millionaire of tomorrow. That's no, true. not necessarily. There are so many people. Uh, I, I'm a very good example. I did not come up with, a, a, with a triple A's or distinction. Mm -hmm. I got, actually, I got a second division in my whole level. Mm -hmm. But here you are, a retired commissioner. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> no, 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 that is a very good example of yourself. I, I, I flunked senior six. I mean, totally flunked yes. the whole thing. And I think what I, dis what I succeeded in discovering is that the education system of Uganda then was not for me. So I succeeded in discovering that. But as, as a commissioner of education, as a uh, former commissioner, uh, as, uh, <laughs> was a commissioner as a commissioner. Okay. Yeah, okay. because the brain is the Thank brain of know. a commissioner. <laughs> yes. Now, as, as a commissioner of education, yes. okay, former, since that's yeah. what you want, yeah. do you think that Uganda, Uganda's the education system of Uganda describes success the wrong way. And that's why parents are looking at success in terms of triple A's. And if, if their child doesn't get all these big A's, then they are like, oh my God, my child has failed. <laughs> Hasn't the education system no. been set up that way? No, I don't think the education system defines success, no. Mm -hmm. It's us, the people, the, the consumers of this, education mm -hmm. who defines what is success and what is not success. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. But when sometime uh, when government I think decided that sciences become compulsory, 
everybody says, no, 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 you see, we don't, we are not, we, some people are not good at sciences. The most important thing was, why should some students go through school without studying any sciences? Mm -hmm. Let them do some bit of sciences. Yes, you might fail the examination, but there has been some learning which will impact on your life. So, get, getting back to your question, who determines success? It is not the examination system. It is not the education system. It is we. How do you look at success? Why do you send your child to school, for instance? I send my child to school to learn. What is the learning for? To open his horizon, to be able to, 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 to skim through life. Is the education system providing the skills for this child to open his horizon? Those are the questions which you should ask. If it does, then the education system has been successful. Whether at the end of the day, Bukenya, Matthew, has set an examination, which is two and a half hours. Mm. The fellow has been in school for six years. Mm. Somebody sets an examination for two and a half hours. At the end of the day, you say, this child has not been successful? No. Well, Commissioner Agaba, you know, in, in politics, we always talk about this north-south divide, which is really to imply that there are some countries that are way above others. You know, it's, it's sort of to demarcate two different lifestyles. You have those countries that are achieving in areas of technology, yes. in science, and in excellence. And then you have the we's of this world, developing nations that are trying to get to where they need to get. Mm -hmm. How does a child coming up in our school system now compete favorably with, say, somebody who is from a, a developed nation? I mean, we've seen innovations coming out of Leslie McCary where you, you find that these kids build an electric car. They've uh, you know, developed issues around maternal health that help us in, in different ways with technology that's rudimentary. How do we skill kids that are coming out of our school system to be competitive worldwide? I, th I think at the moment, all our students who have gone through our education system, let them go out there, they are very competitive. Mm. What the people who remain here, the problem with the people, the students who remain here is their attitude. Attitude towards life, attitude towards what they think education should provide. And, and I think maybe that's where the education system has lacked, to say, look, we are educating you, we, you, 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 you should, how do you apply this knowledge which you've got from school to your own daily life? so that you are able to change your own life. I'll give you an example. There are so many children who start A level. If you are to make, to, to make a roll call, how many of them are engaged in some bit of work now during this long holiday? Very few. Many of them are watching TV at home. And even the parents, the parents are happy <laughs> waiting for the results. And even when the results come, the parents will be happy waiting for these children to be admitted to university. And when they are not admitted to university, they will all cry they will decide to go to university to study anything as long as the child has gone to university. Mm -hmm. But I think it is very, very important. One, by the way, that our children are very competitive. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. My, my girl is in a university in, 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 in the UK. Mm -hmm. She's doing very well. She, she left here from after form six. And there are so many children who go to Malaysia, go to, to UK, go to South Africa. So, are you saying they don't call, do they ever no, come No, mine back is not a combative thing? stand. I'm just saying that how do we, for the ones who stay here, how can we as an education system also feed their minds? I think we must work on their attitude. Mm -hmm. Their attitude that one, education, should help them to, to, to live a better life. That education should help them to, to, to have hands-on. Mm -hmm. How do you apply for it when you, you learn about hygiene? Why should we have an hygienic uh, environment everywhere, as if we have not been to school? Mm. These people have been in schools which have been very clean. The toilets are clean. Mm. They are telling them don't litter. You see, this is education. And uh, Bukenya will never examine that one. Don't litter. <laughs> yeah. There's never an exam no. for, for such yes, a thing. Yes, don't litter. <laughs> so why should you have the vices of this world, mm. where people are throwing rubbish, and that is part of education. That's what makes life different. 
So I think we need to work on the attitudes of the people. The education system, I think now, should we try to see, you know, that is, it is very difficult to measure. You know, you, you can't say whether, I cannot measure whether your attitude has changed or not until it is a life, it, it takes some time. But it sh we, we, we should get it to a situation where people's attitude has changed, that what they have learned in school is not for exam, but it's for their own life. Yeah, I believe I believe Samson. I'm sure you you're gonna chime in here. This is in your life. I, I, I know. I, I I think he he probably is defending the education system. But let me show no, you. I'm not defending the education. Let system. Let me show you that this education system does not produce successes, produces failures. These people who have excelled in entrepreneurship and got distinctions, yeah. six months, um, six years later, after passing entrepreneurship, they are looking for they are looking for jobs but they have passed entrepreneurship. <laughs> um, three months later, after senior six exams, somebody who has a distinction in physics cannot fix a broken switch or, or, uh, or fix a fuse inside a domestic appliance. Yeah. I was at Macquarie University and a student, of course those who have excelled, was pouring waste water from the fourth floor of a building. Now those are the successful students. If those are the successful students, then I think my children need to go somewhere else. Does he think he's with me? He's totally Absolutely. agreeing with what I'm talking this, about. This yeah. is the conversation that we'll need to have yeah. on a further level. Well, thank you so much for coming in and seeing us. Okay. Former Commissioner John yeah, Agaba yeah. in the so studio. Much. All right, when we return, we'll be talking about the nation and trying to ID every citizen within this country. It should be riveting. More to come right here on Urban Today.